Good to go. Yep. All right. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today, we have Mary Beth Temple from Hooked for Life with us, ready for another exciting class. Um, today, we will be knitting the Burnout Bundle Up Knit Snuggle Bunny Blanket. As you can see, Mary Beth is holding it up. Uh, my name is Lara. I'm from Your Inspirations, and I'll be helping you with any questions you might have during today's class. Uh, feel free in the chat here. We'll be sure to um, let Mary Beth know if you have any questions. Um, when we're right now giving everybody some time to join, but feel free to let us know where you're watching from. And just a reminder that today's class is being recorded, so you can find the recording at michaels.com slash classes um, within, the next few day, within the next few days. We have added the pattern link into our chat box and we'll continue to add it throughout the class. Um, but you can also find the pattern in your email confirmation as well. So I'm gonna hand it off to Mary Beth to begin. Well, again, I'm super excited to be here. Um, this is my first of hopefully many classes here at Michael's. So thank you so much for joining me. I see some familiar people and some new friends. So thank you, thank you for hanging out with me today. I'm really, really excited to be here. So we're going to make this wonderful little bunny blanket. And as Laura said, you can download the pattern. Now, obviously I'm not going to be able to cast on and knit a whole blanket. I'm going to work on some small swatches, but the techniques that I wanna go over to do today I want to do just a brief review of seed stitch. I want to teach the make one increase. I want to talk about the different cables. And I want to talk about our little bunny tail, which is a, uh, a bobble. So that's pretty exciting. And I want to get to that too. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is this new yarn, which is Burnett Bundle Up. This is the first time I've used this yarn. It's 100% polyester, uh, but it's lightweight. It's soft, it has a little bit of a halo, but it has a chainette center. So I think this is gonna be really durable and super wonderful for baby presents. I, I'm really excited to see this. This is the first time I've been able to use it. So let's go to the tabletop and take a look at some stitching. Here's my bundle up. We're using the Blue Dawn colorway. So the first thing I want to go over is seed stitch. I know this will be a familiar stitch to a lot of you, but I figured we could uh, start without making anybody crazy. So once again, this is just a very small swatch. Now I have cast on an even number of stitches. So my first row of my two row repeat is going to be knit one, purl one, and do that all the way across. The only trick to seed stitch, particularly if you're relatively new to knitting, is to make sure that you're bringing that yarn between the needle tips because you're taking it back and forth because of course it has to be in the back of the work in order to purl and it has to be in the front of the work in order to knit. So you wanna make sure that you're very carefully taking that yarn between the needles because if you accidentally take it over, you're going to create a yarn over, you're gonna create an extra stitch and we don't want that. So because I'm working on an even number of stitches, I'm going to finish my first row with knit one, purl one, and then I'm going to begin my next row with a purl one. So when you're doing ribbing, you're knitting the knits and purling the purls. When you're doing seed stitch, you're purling the knits and knitting the purls. So it's the same mechanics as a knit one purl one ribbing. It's just offset by one stitch. So you get this beautiful texture pattern. You get this nice texture instead of ribbing. So I'm just going to uh, finish off the rest of this row in pearl because I want to talk a little bit about the make one increase. When you're looking at this pattern, there are a couple sort of sets of instructions. 
you have the bunny cable written out. It's a 12 stitch by 34 row repeat. So you have that written out. But then there's also a pattern for how to actually make the blanket, you know, cast on 164 stitch stitches and work in seed stitch for 38 rows and, and all that other kind of stuff. So it's important to figure out how the cable works, but also to pay some attention to how the cables are placed because they're staggered. Now, I want to talk about the make one increase. So you're going to start your blanket. You're gonna do your cast on, you're going to work in seed stitch the number of times it tells you, and then you're going to set up so that you have seed stitch on one side, seed stitch on the other, reverse stockinette in the middle. Remember the only difference between stockinette and reverse stockinette is which side you're calling the right side of the work. So it is alternating rows of knit and purl, but you're also going to maintain those seed stitch borders. Now, because cables generally, all cables, not just our bunny, but all cables, because of the way you manipulate the fabric, tend to make the fabric draw in in width. So because of that, when you're making the actual blanket and you wanna follow specifically along with the pattern, the way that it's written, there are instances in which you're adding stitches and we're gonna use a make one increase to do that, which I'm about to show you. And then you'll have a cable section. And then there will be instances in which you're going to remove stitches. And the reason is we need to add some before we start cabling, because if we don't, when that cable draws in, the side of the blanket is gonna go like this. It's not gonna be straight and nice up and down. So that's what all those increases and decreases are about. So let's take a closer look at the make one increase. So instead of knitting in my next stitch, I'm going to lift the horizontal bar between that stitch and the one I just knit in. So if you pull your work sideways, there is a horizontal bar right here. I'm gonna use my right-hand needle tip, assuming you're right-handed, of course, vice versa if you're left-handed. I'm gonna pop it onto my left needle and I'm going to knit it through the back loop, not through the front loop. And what that does is it creates an extra stitch, but also you can see it puts just the least little bit of a twist in there and that prevents it from making a big hole. So that adds your stitch that one knit stitch is a little bit twisted, but it's to prevent a gaping hole where it increases. I'm gonna do that one or two more times just because it's one of those things, if you read the instructions, it can be a little confusing, but if you see it done, then it makes perfect sense. So I'm taking my right hand needle tip. I'm lifting that horizontal bar and popping it on my left hand needle. And then I'm going to knit through the back loop not through the front loop like we normally would, but through the back loop, finish it like a stitch. It's gonna pop off. There's my little increase. Let me do that one more time. It's just a technique that a lot of people are not familiar with. Lift the horizontal bar, pop it onto the left-hand needle, knit in the back loop. So you can see how they just nestle into the row. There's one, there's one, there's another one. But by knitting it into the back loop, it draws the fabric in widthwise. You don't want a big gaping hole where that new stitch has been made. Do we have any questions on the make one? We don't have any questions yet, we're good. Terrific, okay, let's take a look at the cable. I'm gonna set that sample aside and pull out a new one. So remember, of course it's obvious, but I always feel the need to say it. I'm using shorter needles. I'm using a smaller swatch. Your piece is going to be way, way bigger than this piece. So we have the bunny pattern available to you two ways. We have it in text all written out, but also if you're a person that prefers the stitch diagrams, 
we also have it in stitch diagrams. So over here you have the key and it tells you which each one of those drawn illustrations mean. And then if you look at the end of the pattern or the beginning of the pattern, I'm sorry, I can't remember where it is, but there's also a list of definitions. And when you see that list of definitions, it's going to tell you what those stitches mean. So the pictures tell you the abbreviation for the stitch that you need to make. And then you go to the abbreviations and it will write out what those mean. So we're going to set the bunnies <laughs> because of course there's more than one in a row. We're gonna set them in a variety of places. But again, for the, for the instance of, of this video, I'm just gonna work on this little sample. So my seed stitch border I know is eight stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, two tips I wanna give you. One is, as I said, the right side of the work is reverse stockinette. So if I pick up my work and the bulk of my work is on the right side that I'm seeing all my pearl bumps, then I know I'm going to start that row with a knit. I don't have to guess if I'm supposed to start with a knit or, or the pearl. If the right side of the work is facing me, I'm starting with a knit. If the wrong side of the work is facing me, I'm starting with a pearl. The other thing you can do, you don't have to, but you might want to do it because you're going to have a way bigger seed stitch border than I have. You can put a stitch marker at the point where your seed stitch border ends. So if there's however many stitches in it, I think it's 30 something, uh, I think it's 32 or 34, something like that. You could do your seed stitch border and then just drop a ring marker right there. And then you don't have to remember where your seed stitch ends. You could just go until you come to the marker. So again, in my pattern, I know that there's four stitches before where I need to set my cable. So I'm going to purl those four stitches. So now I'm looking at either the first row of the diagram or the first row of the text and it says knit. And I know that it's a 12 stitch repeat. So I'm going to knit 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now, again, you'll have way more stitches to do and you're setting multiple bunnies in a row. There's not an instance that you have where you're going to have one bunny in a row, but we're only working on one for the video. Now, if you are new to cables or you have a little anxiety, be, anxiety about placing all these bunnies, you could also, if you wanted to, slip a ring marker at the beginning and the end of each 12 stitch repeat that would set your bunnies off from your main fabric, but that's up to you. So now you can see, because I've interrupted the stitch pattern, you can see that that's where my next bunny is gonna sit. I'm on a wrong side row. And because I'm on a wrong side row, I know that I'm going to begin my seed stitch with a purl stitch. So I'm gonna work my little seed stitch border. See, I should have put a stitch marker because I didn't count. Now I have, again, on my sample, I have four stitches before my 12 stitch repeat from my bunny. So I'm gonna knit four. 
Now I'm up to my 12 stitch repeat. If I look at the instructions, it says row two purl. So I'm just going to purl those 12 stitches. So here I am at the end of my 12 stitches. And again, now I'm just going to move on and knit the number of stitches the pattern tells me until I get to the place where I set my next bunny. And then I'm going to finish off with seed stitch, knowing that I'm going to begin that seed stitch section, that's a tongue twister, with a purl stitch because it's a wrong side row. All right, so again, it's easier to see now because there's a couple of rows. You can see that my bunny is all sitting here. So the next thing we're going to do is a cable. We're gonna do our first cable stitch in this pattern. And that is going to help us, give us a nice little rounded bunny butt <laughs> at the bottom. Now to do this, you're going to want to have a cable needle and they come in a variety of types. These are my favorite for beginners because of the curve. I call them candy cane cable needles because they look like a little candy cane. You can also find them that are straight with a little bump. Uh, if you're at the coffee shop, you could use a stir stick if you had to, because believe me, I've done it. You could use a spare double pointed needle. Uh, there's any number of things that you can use for a cable needle, but I prefer these and I will show you why when we get there. So this is a right side row, I'm starting with a knit. Six, seven, eight. And then again, in my case, I know I've only got four stitches before my first bunny. Two, three, four. And then the instructions say C6B and C6F. So here's some things about cable abbreviations and what they mean and how they work that will help you for this pattern and any other cable pattern you choose to do in the future. So obviously the uppercase C tells you it's a cable. The next thing that you normally see is a number in this case six that tells you that six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, six stitches are going to be involved in your cable. So it doesn't have to be an even number. It can be any number of stitches and whatever pattern you're doing, that cable is going to be defined in the special stitches area. But these are just little tips so that these stitches make sense to you. And then B stands for back and F stands for front. So if I see C, six, B, I know I'm going to cable. I know I'm going to involve six stitches. And I know that the first set of stitches that I drop, I'm going to drop to the back of the work because that's what that B means. So having looked at my abbreviation list, I know that it's telling me to move three stitches to the cable needle, drop them in the back of the work. And this is why I like these little candy cane cable needles because I can let that go. There is no possible way that that is going to fall off. Now it tells me knit three, one, two, three, and knit three from the cable needle. So I'm bringing that cable needle up from behind. Now you can do one of two things. If you're using one of those straight cable needles, I prefer to pop them back onto the left-hand needle. But when you're using a curved one like this, honestly, 
you can knit them right off the cable needle. There's no reason to move those stitches if you don't have to. Now cable needles come generally in about two or three sizes. There'll be a fine one, a medium one, and a bulky one. You don't have to say, oh, I'm using a size eight needle, so I need to find a size eight cable needle. It's, it's not that deep, um, but they will come in different weights because you don't wanna be trying to force something. This is a medium weight. You don't wanna be forcing something this thick into maybe a lace weight yarn. Now let's look at the next cable. It's C6F. So once again, I know it's a cable. I know I'm going to work it over three stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I know I'm gonna hang my hook in the front. You may also notice with this curved needle, I like to put my stitches on using the short side, not the long side. It works either way, to be honest, uh, but again, I find it easier to knit off the longer side. So I'm going to put three stitches on my cable needle. You want to be careful not to twist them. Drop them in the front. Knit three, one, two, three, and then knit three from the cable needle. One, two, three. I'm gonna set this aside for now because I don't need it for a couple of rows. And this is what it looks like. Now it looks sort of twisty at the moment. It's one of those things, the pattern is going to make way more sense visually once you've got a few more rows on it. You can see how it makes this little curve. Here's my cable right there on my first bunny. So since I did two, six stitch cables, I've already worked my 12 stitches in my bunny. So now I'm back to my background fabric. In my case, purl four, and then my seed stitch. And I'm on a right side row, so I know my seed stitch section starts with a knit. Do we have any cable questions? We are going to do some more cables. So um, we, we can see how other kinds of cables work. But if you have any general questions, now's a really good time to ask them while mm -hmm. I am working back. We don't have any cable questions just yet, but we did receive a question just after last time we did a question call out. It was from Liz and she said, is that a make one right or left? So this was back. Yes. yes, now I understand what she's talking about. Um, God, now I have to think about it. I hope that I'm not incorrect when I say that that is a make one right. Oftentimes in some patterns, and this is not one of them, where you have a bunch of those make ones, and this is for everybody else to ask, to understand what her question was. Uh, you'll see make one right, make one left, and they're lifted in different ways. Generally speaking, if there's only one make one in a pattern and it just says make one, it's the one that I just showed you. I believe it's a right, but don't hold me to it. I'm gonna to have to look that up, two, four, six, eight. And um, you can always ask me on Instagram. I know that they will talk to you about my, uh, they'll give you my Instagram link at the end. So feel free to ask me any questions on Instagram that I, I wasn't able to answer here, but I really am 90% certain it's a make one right. But in this pattern, there's only one style of make one and it's the one that we just showed. So I'm on row four and it's telling me to purl. So once again, I'm gonna purl 12. Now, again, it's the least little bit tight. It's a least little bit fiddly, but that's because the fabric's pulled super tight because you just made a cable. And you do see a little bit of a gap there and it's not to worry about. It's, it's the nature of the beast. The uh, yarn being polyester, it does not have a ton of elasticity. And I don't say that in a negative way, just if you're used to knitting cables on wool, it, it tends to snap back a lot quicker, but animal fibers snap back more quickly than plant fibers or synthetic fibers. I'm telling you though, and I mean this sincerely, I'm not, I'm not getting paid extra to say this. I really love this yarn. 
I, I feel like it being chainette based, the, the construction of it is gonna make it super, super durable, but it's still soft. It has a little bit of a halo, but you know, some yarns with halos after a while, they don't look as fresh after 20 washings as they do when you first made it. I feel like this is gonna be really super durable. And of course you don't want to give any new parent a, uh, an item for their baby that they have to hand wash because who has time for that? So there I have finished row four. Now, in the interest of time, I am going to skip row five and six. So what's gonna happen as we go through this? My, this bunny is only gonna be about this tall. But what I want to do is show you the rows on camera that have some technique in them. The ones that are knit across the 12 or purl across the 12, I don't think you guys need help with that. You'll know how to do that. So I'm going to, uh, again, maintain my pattern and get up to the bunny, but I am skipping, if you're following along in the pattern, I'm skipping row six. I'm, I'm, pardon me, I'm skipping row five because that was just the knit 12 and I'm skipping row six because that's just purl 12. And I cannot think of anything less interesting than you having to watch me do plain rows in a short class. So I'm gonna zip ahead and we're gonna do row seven. And just double count, two, four, six, eight. That's my seed stitch. I'm going to go, there's my four up to my bunny. So here's my 12 stitches for my bunny. And again, you can see on my original, there'll be a few more rows between the top of the cable and the bottom of the bobble, but we're going to get to the good stuff on camera. So row seven says knit six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we see a new abbreviation and it is MB, my initials, MB, and it's make bobble. And then we have defined the bobble. So I'm gonna make the bobble right here. The first thing it says looks like a typo, but it's not. It's K F B F B F. That's knit, F is for front, B is for back, same like a cable. So it's knit front, back, front, back, front. And I'm gonna take one stitch and turn it into five. So I'm going to knit in the front and I'm not going to push it off the left-hand needle. I'm going to leave it where it was. So that's one. Now I'm going to knit in the back, through the back loop only. Yarn over and pull it through. Now I have two. Knit in the front. Don't push it off the left-hand needle. That gives me three. Knit through the back loop only. So I'm inserting my right-hand needle tip in the center of the stitch and knitting in the back loop. That's four. Don't push it off the left-hand needle. When I knit my very last one, my fifth stitch, then I can push it off the left-hand needle. So here is the start of my bobble. I have one, two, three, four, five stitches. And you can see it's sort of setting itself off from the other stitches. So it says, turn the work, purl five, one, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna turn and knit five. One, two, three, four, five, turn, purl five again. One, two, three, four, five. So you can see it's starting to build up in height. This is what's going to give me all that uh, texture for my little bunny tail. Now it says SL2PK3TOGP2SSO, which is a short way <laughs> of saying slip to pearl wise. 
slip one purl wise, slip the second one purl wise. So my yarn is still in the back of the work and I have slipped those two stitches purl wise individually without twisting them. Then it says knit three together. So here's my three stitches, one, two, three. I'm going to knit those three stitches together as one. So I'm turning three stitches into one and it's a little tight. If you have to, you can work a little more closely to the tips of the needles because the needles are a little thinner there. But you wanna make sure you get uh, the full width of the stitch up on the needle when you're finished because you don't want this part to be too tight. So now I had five stitches on my bobble. Now I have three, the two that I slipped and the one I generated by doing the knit three together. Then it says P2, SSO. That's pass two slipped stitches over. And I'm going to do that all together. So I'm going to insert my left hand needle tip. I'm going to skip this end guy and I'm going to insert it under the two slipped stitches. I'm going to give the working yarn the least little bit of a tug because I don't want this guy to go popping off the end there. So I'm gonna hold on to it to make sure that that does not happen. And I'm going to pass the two slipped stitches over the knit stitch. I'm gonna make sure to get it all the way up on the needle and then I can remove my left hand needle tip. So I had one stitch, I turned it into five stitches. I worked a few rows on it to give it some height. And then I turned five stitches to three and then to one. So we still have the same number of stitches in this row that we had at the beginning. So that's make bobble, then it says knit five, one, two, three, four, five. And then that's the end of my 12 stitch bunny. So here's the one we just made. And here's the one I made earlier, sitting a little higher up over the cables. I'm checking my time here because I have a lot I wanted to get through. Do we have any questions on the bobble, Allie? We don't have any questions. Oh, actually, Jerry said, is it okay to pass slip stitches one at a time? Yes, it is fine. I find passing them both at the same time makes that top a little tighter. See how close they are to each other right there. I feel like if you pass one at a time, you get a little more air in there and you want that top to be tight because you really want that bobble to pop out and give you a ton of uh, texture. But yes, you could do it one at a time if you wanted to. It will not mess up the stitch. So once again, I'm just getting to the point where I can do the next row. You guys are super smart today with no questions. So once again, there's the one that we just did. And there's the one that I did earlier. Um, the other thing I wanna point out, sometimes people freak out in the course of doing a blanket, especially, um, sometimes the bobble goes to the wrong side. Uh, you didn't do anything wrong. You don't have to freak out about it. Just use your finger to push it back, especially when you're making a blanket that has you know, 20 bunnies on it. As you're working, you're not going to finish this blanket in an evening. You know, As you're working, it may be that some of them sort of pop to the wrong side. It's not a big deal to pop them back to the right side. So once again, we're doing our seed stitch border. And then I'm going to work in my stitches up till I get to the bunny to And then I'm going to look at row eight and it tells me just to purl. So I'm going to purl 12. One, two, 
three, four, five, six. There's the top of my bobble, seven. And again, I wanna make sure that I, I, I tend to give those stitches a little extra tug. I don't want it to be super tight, but I wanna make sure that bobble has enough tension. The, the more tension it has, the more likely it is to, to give you a nice big pop. And we do want our little bunny tail to be puffy. And of course, when you're making your blanket, you will have multiple bunnies in a row. And my seed stitch. All right. So that was row eight. And once again, I'm making the world's shortest bunny <laughs> for the purpose of this video. And I'm going to skip all the way to row 17 because rows 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 are all knit 12 or purl 12. And I don't think you need to watch me do that. So let me pull some more yarn up. Now, when we get to row 17, we're gonna do the cables again. So that's why earlier when I was saying, you know, if you don't quite get 100% of the gist of the cable right now, it's fine. We're gonna do them again. And this is the row in which that happens. So once again, if you look at the bunny that I made earlier, here's my little bobble that we just made. I'm not gonna make those cables till way up here, but we're doing them next just to get them done in the time allotted. So what this next set of cables is going to do is going to bring the stitches that you cabled earlier. So we got these loops that go out and then we had these straight sides, which is the part I'm not doing right now. And then the next thing that's going to happen is this next set of cables is going to draw those loops in. And that's what gives his little body the oval shape. So it says C6F, C6B. So once again, going to take my three stitches, drop them in front of the work, knit three, one, two, three and then three from the cable needle. One, two, three. And then the next is C6B. So that's cable six stitches. We put three on the needle drop them in the back of the work. And again, in your case, the bobble's not going to be fighting you because it's gonna be far lower down on the fabric. Um, you know, I wanna point this out because it's easy to do and I just almost did it myself and I've been knitting cables for 40 years. Um, the other good thing to realize about being consistent about starting on one side and knitting off the other side. I just almost tried to knit it off that way, which would have given me a twist, but my brain went, oh no, we don't knit off the short side. We only knit off the long side. So I caught the mistake that I was just about to make. So I, if any of you have taken classes with me out in the real world, my, my line is always, as long as you are internally consistent, by which I mean, if you do the same thing the same way every time in any pattern, then you're correct. Who's to tell you that you're wrong? You want stuff to be consistent so you can see it. But it's also cool like that. If you develop habits, 
particularly when you're learning. If you, uh, what's the old expression about starting as you mean to go on? If you develop good cabling habits when you learn to cable, then it helps you later on. There are fewer things that you have to guess about. All right, here's my seed stitch. And then we're going to move on to row 18. We have a few questions that came in, Mary Beth. Go for it. I'll catch up to the next row. Perfect. You can all watch me seed stitch, which is not very interesting. <laughs> so Ali, she asked, I would like to do the scar. I would like to make this cable motif scarf. So she'd like to make this for a cable motif scarf. Mm -hmm. Can we knit the bunny in reverse? Can we knit the bunny in reverse? We did have also a follow-up question from Jerry. It's around the same thing, I believe. And she said, or do two halves of the scarf and join in the middle. That's that's what I would do. Um, so here's the question. There's, there's two ways that knitting something in reverse could be taken. Uh, it could mean, you know, right side, wrong side, but it could also mean as, as Jerry pointed out, is it more a matter of if you do a whole scarf, do you want bunny tails to meet in the center, say, and then the bunny ears go out to the ends or vice versa? Um, I would say this, if I were going to do that, if I was gonna reverse it, I would use the chart. Instead of trying to read the text backwards, I think I would follow the chart. And for the first half of the scarf, I'd work rows one to 34. And for the second half of the scarf, I'd work rows 34 to one. I hope that makes sense. I think that would do it. Alternatively, as Jerry pointed out, you can absolutely knit two halves of a scarf and then uh, join them together in the center. And honestly, if you were gonna do a scarf, I, what I did is I cast on, you know what, you guys should hit me up on Instagram and I'll tell you the number of stitches I did on this uh, because this, is, this would actually be a pretty nice scarf width. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but what I had was eight in each border, four before the bunny, four after the bunny, and 12 for the bunny. Um, so yeah, uh, but the other thing I would say is this, one of the difficulties about, so I would call this a figural cable pattern because it makes uh, an animal or a plant or something like that, as opposed to um, more of a Guernsey cable that is more geometric. If you make a scarf out of this, it is not gonna be so attractive on the right side. So I get your point. If it was me, I would be more likely to um, do a planer scarf or maybe a seed stitch scarf because I don't like, personally, I don't like wrong sides of scarves to be ugly. That's just me, but that's my thing. Um, I might maybe do a plain scarf and make bunny pockets for it. Or I might just sort of randomly place some bunnies. I don't know that I would do a whole row of bunnies Although if you wanted to, you certainly could. Um, but I don't think it is as attractive on the wrong side of the work as it might be. Let me and get up to where it was. We Go ahead. had a, one other question from Maria. Um, she is asking if this blanket had to be done in round needles or if it can also be done in regular cable needles. Oh, um, if you're talking about circular versus straight, mm -hmm. Um, straight needles will work just fine. Here's the reason I use, well, first off, if I'm working on camera for me personally and I'm showing you stuff, circulars are just easily, um, as Laura can tell you because I have done other projects with her. If I try and knit with straight needles on camera, what happens is they bang up against the table and it's really irritating. So I always use circular needles on camera. That's my personal preference. The other thing I would point out to you, if you were doing the full blanket, which has what, 164, I'm looking, um, 194 stitches in the blanket. It's gonna be really super hard for you to keep 194 stitches on a straight needle because the long straight needles are 14 inches, right? And if your blanket's gonna be, let's see, your blanket's gonna be 39 inches square. So you are trying to cram 39 inches of fabric onto a 14 inch needle. 
And what's going to happen, it's going to be frustrating. The loops are going to get tangled up with each other and um, it's going to want to pop off the edge. To me, that would be super frustrating. Now, if you are uncomfortable with circular needles and you absolutely want to use a straight, I would go ahead and do it. It will absolutely work. But this is an instance, since that fabric is 39 inches wide, I would get a, a circular needle that's you know 29 or 32 or 40 inches long and work back and forth in rows because then the cable gives those stitches enough room to breathe, they can spread out and they're not gonna fight their way off the end of your needle. So personal preference, if you absolutely cannot abide circular needles and some people cannot, then yeah, go ahead and do it on straight. But when I put my work down, I would absolutely, I would go to Michael's and I would get some of those rubber point protectors. Um, they look like little triangles. They look like little witch hats. They're sort of triangular and have a, a little flange on the bottom. And you put them over your knitting needles when you put your work away. Uh, and you do that so you don't stab your finger when you reach into your work bag, but it also keeps the stitches from going off the end. But you are gonna have to watch your other end and make sure those stitches are not popping off. And I say this, I know we're talking about this a lot, but it's a question a lot of people have. I say this as somebody who has, you know, who only knit on straight needles for 20 years. I didn't like circular needles, but there's just certain times when they work better. And this is one of those times if you were doing the whole blanket. Do we have anything else, Allie? Um, yeah, so Sean asked, what is the total number of bunnies you should end up with on the finished blanket? Um, I would have to look at the picture, which I don't have in front of me. Um, if you uh, wanna ask that, maybe either, maybe Laura could take a look at that. Uh, Laura, will, I, don't have the, I don't have the picture. We'll in, yeah, we will add in the pattern, which should have um, right. that Right, you'll be able to see there. the number of bunnies. It looks like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five nine, it, it's like 23 bunnies or something like that. But um, I just went to look and see what time it is and I gotta get moving y'all or we're not gonna get to the next part I wanna talk about. <laughs> so um, I promised I would not go over time today. Here's the thing, so we're on row 18. Here's the thing I wanna say about row 18. Up until now, everything you do in your 12 stitch repeat has been across the whole 12 stitches with the exception of the bobble. So I knit all 12 or I purled all 12 or I cabled all 12, again, with the exception of the bobble. When you get to here and it's really easy to see on the diagram, we're now going to be working so that the first two and the last two stitches of that 12 stitch repeat blend into the background fabric. So I wanted to point that out so that you don't get in the habit of like, I'm working over 12, I'm working over 12, I'm working over 12. And then here, you're still technically working over 12 stitches, but it looks like you're working over eight. And I didn't want you to be confused by that. So I wanted to do that one on camera. So here we are, we are on row 18. So now I'm going to knit two, purl eight, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, knit two, knit two. So that's what I did over my 12 stitches. And now I'm back onto my regular background fabric. Allie, do we have any more questions now while I'm catching up, while I'm doing my seed stitch to my next, uh, to my next no section? No questions yet. Okay. It's, uh, it's good to ask them while I'm seed stitching because <laughs> that takes up a little bit of time. Time flies when you're having fun. I just looked at the clock and went, heck, I have a lot, I have a lot to get done in nine minutes. <laughs> All right. So once again, now we're on row 19. We're gonna do our seed stitch border. Row 19 is right side row. So I'm starting with a knit.
There's my uh, four. One, two, three, four. And now I'm in my 12 section. I'm on 19, so it's purl two, purl two, knit eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, purl two, one, two. And then we're back to the backing fabric, except I couldn't remember what I was doing. Let me check my time here, 53. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do in the interest of time, four, six, eight. I'm going to seed stitch over to the other side. I want to show you the, um, wanted to show you the cable that is in row 33 and I'm not gonna get there. So I'm just gonna show it to you, not in its proper place, but there's a point I wanna make about that cable. So I'm just gonna to get to a point where I can show you the C3B and the C3F and I'm gonna do it there again. All the warnings, all the big red flags, it's not where it belongs. I just wanna do it in a place where it's convenient for me to show you before we run out of time. And the reason it's different, many times, not every time, but many times, if you see a C4, six or a, C, uh, a C4B or a C6B or C8B, you're going to split those stitches down in the middle. Not every cable, but many cables, particularly beginner cables. If you're working over six stitches, three go on the needle and three go elsewhere, right? The thing with the C3B and the C3F is there's three stitches. So you're not going to do it evenly. So I just wanted to show you real quick what that looks like so you don't get anxious. Two, six, eight. So let's take a look again, just on these knit stitches because they're hanging out and we can do it. Let's take a look at the C3B. So for the C3B, I'm going to put two stitches on my cable needle, being careful not to twist them. I'm going to drop them in the back. And I'm only going to knit one stitch. And then bring my two up from the back. And again, the only reason I'm pointing it out is up till now, you've been working cables on an even number of stitches and you have always split them down the middle. And this one's slightly different. So I didn't want it to put anybody off. This is the cable that is at the tip of the bunny ears. So for the C3F, I'm going to put two stitches on my needle, drop it in the front of the work, knit only one stitch off the other needle, and then the two that are on my cable needle. So you can see them there's my little cable twists, they're right here. But those are the ones that we use at the tippy top of the bunny ears. So again, looking at my completed bunny that I made yesterday, there's my cables, my bunny's starting to curve out. There's my bobble for my puffy little cotton tail. I'm gonna work straight for a while. There's my cables that bring it in. I'm gonna go straight for a little while, there's my cables. And at the same time, this is a little more narrow. So the head is a little more narrow than the body because I've got my full 12 down here and up here I have two, eight, two. And then when I get up here, I'm going to twist little cables to differentiate between the two ears. Then we're going to have some pearls, some knits and pearls, some knits and pearls. Again, that's all written out or diagrammed. And I'm gonna finish my bunny with the little, uh, two twist cable that I just showed you. And that's really all there is to that. You just have to carefully follow along with the pattern to make sure that you have your instructions correct. So thank you very much for joining me on my first ever Michael's class. And uh, I'm gonna go back, Reina, to the front facing camera and say goodbye. <laughs>
thank you so much, guys. It was my first time here. Thank you for uh, engaging. It's really nice when people ask questions. It gives me stuff to know and, and gives me uh, ideas on, on what to share with you all. So thank you so much for joining me. And I'm going to pass it back to Laura. Thanks everybody for joining us today for this live community classroom with Michaels. And we would love to see your blanket. So be sure to share your work with the hashtag make it Michaels and the hashtag your inspirations. Um, also a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and today's recording will be available um, at michaels.com slash classes as well as the Michaels um, YouTube channel. So make sure you check that out. So nice. Thanks everybody.